going to turn you on to the power of the sun. This light is being brought to you by the sun's power. It's plugged into the world's first and only solar breeder, a manufacturing plant using the sun's power to produce solar panels or photovoltaic cells. In just 20 years, this new science has come full circle. It's now breeding. The solar breeder in the North American state of Maryland is just the latest development in the earthy quest for solar power, a quest which so far has led to some very unearthly prices. The cost of solar power remains in some instances as exorbitantly high as the solar powered satellites that sire the semiconductor industry. Even at today's prices, a solar system just large enough to power a 100 watt light bulb would cost at least $1,500. But then it's economies of scale we're looking for. And that's where the SolarX breeder and its very latest photovoltaic cells comes in. This plant is an energy breeder using electricity converted from sunlight, photovoltaics it's called, it can produce enough power for 50 average suburban homes, 200 kilowatts. But at the breeder, the power is used to operate manufacturing equipment, heat and air conditioning units, and lights and typewriters in a solar cell manufacturing plant. The power of the sun to tap even more of the sun's energy. The formula for the breeder's success though begins here, at a subsidiary of SolarX, Semix, where a new silicon solar cell has been developed. Silicon rock, in its most pure form, the second most common element found on Earth next to oxygen. It's also a highly efficient semiconductor, which makes it the most practical, low-cost mineral for use in the manufacture of photovoltaic cells. Up to now, high-purity silicon crystals have been grown in cylindrical tubes and sliced into wafers, about the size and shape of a piece of salami. Semix has found a way of melting impure silicon and shaping it into a brick mould, which is then cut, paper-thin, into square or rectangular solar cells. The new shape is more efficient but the change has also brought about the most dramatic plunge in the cost of solar energy. SolarX are now confident that by 1986, they'll produce solar electricity at a dollar a watt or less than 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Presently, Maine's electricity in Australia costs between seven and 15 cents a kilowatt hour. Prices will tumble even further as the industry inevitably becomes more automated. At present, the individual skills of workers are required at each stage of production. Like here, where the worker supervises the coating of a non-reflective blue dye over the cells. Simultaneously, the cells are mapped with a network of lines along which the electricity will travel. The dye and grid are then baked onto the cell before a nickel and solder coating is added. At each stage of the operation, each cell is handled individually. And this is the end product, a wafer-thin silicon cell, 72 of which are required to produce 70 watts of electricity at five volts. There are more than two million of these silicon cells on the array of the solar breeder. For manufacturers, it represents a design feat. They have been trying to maximize two apparently contradictory requirements, maximizing the total surface exposed to the sun and the current carrying capacity of each individual cell. Each one of these lines represents a current carrying channel for electricity pooling all of the electricity gathered on the solar cell and channeling it into one single collection unit. With the amount of electricity gathered depending directly on the efficiency of each cell, these new semi-crystalline cells will pay for themselves in power production within two years. At the SolarX breeder, 
the entire array will have paid for itself within nine years. From then on, theoretically, the solar manufacturing plant will be drawing free power from the sun. It's been raining all day, and the outside temperature now has just fallen to below zero. But even in these conditions, electricity is still being produced by this solar array. For as long as there's light, there will be power production. Solar energy now can be just as efficient a power source in the South Pole as in the Australian outback. But frankly, I know now which of the two places I'd rather be in. Well, we'll make sure that she has a, a warmer assignment next week. Well, next on to...